I think that it's it's funny though because I just program, right? And I do macros for some people. I do nutritional guidance, so to speak, for some people. Where I'm like, hey, like, let's help you find baselines. Let's set like good dietary habits. Um, but for the most part, people, some people want to learn. They want to get smarter so they can tell their family how they're doing and encourage them to do the same. But most people just want they want them they want the results, right? You're selling the results of being in a better place, of being healthier, healthier relationship with food, or looking and feeling better. Um, so the contextual conversation, the the passion, the the under roots of all this shit, of the numbers, the three numbers you give people, you don't get to talk about those all the time or how those play in certain space, how those play in psychology, mm-hmm. how those play in business. Um, so when you have the opportunity, it's normal to get fired up and excited about it. Yeah, like I told you, I was like, I I wanted to make this just a simple Instagram video that people could replay. And it was over five minutes long. I'm like, put me on a podcast. God, someone host me, please, immediately. We love podcasts. And speaking of that, everyone, welcome to the P2 Podcast. I have back with us Paige Thorla. If you don't know Paige, Paige is a registered dietitian. She works with Bare Aesthetics. She takes on clients of all different walks of life, competitors, lifestyle clients, pregnancy clients, like she works with everyone. Um, she's a vat of knowledge. She's a lot of fun. She's a mom. Uh, she also has a book, which I believe is super cool. It's an awesome resource. Um, I think that's the coolest part about it is that it's not a book telling people what they should or should not do so much as it is a, a guide. It's something to refer back to. Um, so we'll talk a bit about that throughout this. Uh, we'll also plug it at the end. We'll hyperlink it in the the caption as well, but I'm going to hand it over to to Paige to kind of give us a bit of an intro as to why she wanted to get on the podcast today. We'll dive into some things and just see where conversation takes us. Yes. I'm so happy you guys have me. I just love you guys so much. So for quick context, I got my bachelor of science in dietetics and most people know that, but for this, I think it's cool to remind people that I got my college degree I graduated in 2013, 10 years ago. That's insane. And I took five years to do my degree because I chose all my colleges based on pharmacy schools, convinced that, you know, good at science and math, wanted something that paid. And I got got to college and was like, this is not what I want to do. Anyways, took five years to finish. So like to the year, 10 years, I graduated college. That's wild. Um, And then I worked in nutrition starting in, I would say, 2015. Um, and then did my internship and in 18 started doing what I'm doing now. And it's cool. I'm sure a lot of people can say, you know, who's been doing this for a long time. I've worked in so many different like areas that you just kind of see how different people do different things. Um, and like even what sells, like my 2015 job was sales. Like we just made money and it was sold to even me as like this nutrition thing. So it's, yeah, it's cool to like say I've been in the industry for a little bit, but part of that's important and relevant for this because I, since for 10 years, it's so interesting. A lot of uh, dietitians who come out of being a dietitian and, and the school part, and then we pass the exam and we celebrate, then we get in the space and we're like, okay, now how do we help real people? Like not just people who are sick. And it sucks for us. Cause like, and I still am a true advocate for being an RD. That's not for this podcast, but I, I'm with, I, I'm in solidarity with a lot of people in my generation who learn a certain way and then can't even apply it because it's just not effective. Like we've made our degree effective in our own ways. I think a lot of us are our deeds now, especially in the online coaching space, which has been wonderful. It's like this easy into private practice, which is like, when you do that in school, you know, there's like brick and mortar buildings and rent and like insurance. And then, I mean, stat, you right. So like when you're a private practice, like it's in a different context now, you do it online. You know, it's like very cool. So anyways, um, just a lot of the reason I wanted to do this podcast is I, and we'll get into this. I you know that I love tracking macros and I love teaching macros and a trigger for me is when tracking macros is demonized and lumped in with other diets that should not be done, right? Like with keto even. And it bothers me. And I think that's 
I kind of want to like, it's almost like an ask, like if any intuitive eating coaches hear this, it's an ask, um, but also just a way for people who are not coaches in either way to keep in perspective how macro tracking can be very helpful and not a diet. And so we'll touch on kind of what I even learned in school 10 years ago versus like what I'm seeing now. But my main, I this is just, I think, an ongoing topic and should be, but tracking macros, I don't think should be this diet that you should celebrate getting away from necessarily. For sure. Um, it's interesting. And I think uh, like I mentioned it a bit earlier um, when it comes down to the psychology of things. That's all it is, right? Like, that's all most of any of this stuff is, is just the social psychology that gets built around something. Um, and I think, you know, macros being heavily associated with like bodybuilding culture, um, and then bodybuilding culture being an unsustainable lifestyle, right? To see someone on stage and be that way all year round. So you're like, well, that's, you track macros that you look like that. And it's like, no, but I understand the like, yes, really, correlation. Really, yes. exactly. you know, you see a person who's tracking macros and typically they're looking to get on stage or they're looking to cut fat, right? They're in a, they're in a cut phase. Um, you don't ever see someone counting their macros who just looks like a normal person and they go, I'm just living, bro. I'm just, you know, I, I just want to make sure that, you know, my diet's balanced. That I'm not right. taking much of one thing. Um, and, you know, just like anything, it's the freedom of anything is earned, right? So the ability to step away from not needing to know what, how many morsels of X, Y, and Z you're putting into your body comes from practice, you know, doing it for a decent amount of time, building in solid routines, staple meals, go-tos, understanding the you know, content and makeup of certain foods allows you to say, you know what, maybe I don't need to weigh everything. Maybe I can take a step back because I have a good practice now. I'm in tune with my like satiety levels and, you know, even my biofeedback. Oh, I'm kind of like groggy and lethargic. Or, oh man, I have no focus today. Like, let me look back at like the last couple of days, last couple of weeks, last month or so. How's my diet been? And being able to kind of recall on a conceptual basis, but then to be able to take that recall that may or may not be super accurate and put it into practice and go, let me like tighten things up. Let me just like go back to the basics, get myself back on track, and then we'll adjust from there. Mm -hmm. You said so many things. So I, the just to touch on the psychology, I think that this is a good, this is a good chance to also just say right off the bat, like I love absolutely love the intuitive eating coaches and accounts that I follow and truly, truly agree and also preach 99.9% .9 of what they say, because that is how you should be living your life. You should be eating intuitively. And I always say to my clients, the definition of intuition is making a, a, a split decision with not ha having to justify it. And that's how we should live our life. And it's a cool way to be able to live your life when it comes to food. Um, so talking about the psychology of it, I think that's also who makes your own personal experiences creates the coach that you are. And so a lot I feel, and I can't speak for anyone, but it, it seems that a lot of intuitive eating coaches are born from really unhealthy macro tracking situations. Right. And so naturally having gone through hell with it and then pulled themselves out of it, they want to do everything in their power to get people that freedom as well. So ne even that I'm like, yes, like, please help us prevent anyone going through what you went through. But the, the table they flip with it is so never track macros. I'm like, well, let's like take it for what it is and realize that your situation and your personal experience with macro tracking is what people should avoid, but it can be avoided with more than just don't do it. And so equally, and and I love the passion that they have with that because again, they're like I also believe in that. Like you should help us prevent, you know, the the disordered part of it. But I come from the other side of it where I did use macro tracking for an extreme of bodybuilding. I also used it in maintenance. I also used it for pregnancy and for breastfeeding. And 
came out of all those situations, okay, I have a good relationship with tracking macros and I've, I've done it in extremes and I've done it. I mean, even in like situations that I had to relearn, like tracking at Thanksgiving, you know? So like I've done it, let's say the unhealthy way and I've done it, I've learned better and I still believe in it. And I think that's what makes me so passionate about coaching it is again, the psychology of it is coaches are always going to teach what they know. And again, I think I truly think the good macro coaches and the good intuitive eating coaches, we actually all believe the same thing. It's, it's when you say macro tracking is disordered period, then I'd like to have a conversation with you. Um, and that's kind of what I want to touch on is, is like the pros and cons of macro tracking. And you touched on some situations where it's absolutely helpful. Um, so we can dive into some of that if you want, if I can keep going off some stuff that you said. 100%. 100%. This is this is your show. I'm here to listen and learn with everyone else. I um only to that I think I'd add is my opinion. I think if we do with everything, right? I I don't I'm not going to say every IE account is clickbaity. Like you said, I do think a lot of it is founded in a personal journey and what they found they needed to shift their mindset towards and I think that they lose the opportunity to teach clients in not focusing on that word mindset, right? Because you have tools, right? Explosives can be really, really cool constructive devices. We use them to build buildings, tear things down and build things that are new. We also use them to blow up other people. Like, so it's it's a tool that can be used for a ton of different things. Macros can be used in a way that is very, very restrictive, which talks about mindset and approach. And that can be very just like throttling for people, right? It can definitely like suffocate you into a space where you either lash out in the inverse and you're binging or you're so extreme and now you have a disordered like process around the way you look and what you eat and your hunger levels and stuff like that. So it's in the use of the tool, not so much the tool itself. And I will hand it back to you to talk about the use of the tool. Yeah. Areas and whatnot. Yeah, for sure. And I think that's exactly right. It's it it is mindset and I want I mean some of these coaches I know personally and I want to be like I wish I was your coach. <laughs> like I'm glad that that what you went through propelled you to where you are now cuz you're thriving, but I also wish I was your coach because you would feel differently. I truly believe that. Um and you know, just for some insight into how I coach, yes, I want everyone to start tracking macros. Um, to touch on really quickly what we learn in school, it's always one-on-one interviews because then 10 years ago and prior, it's like you've got a brick and mortar, either you're meeting in a hospital, if you've got an office, people come to you. Um, and so you're in an interview and you talk about their diet. And at that point, it's diet recall. Right. And there are so many studies that prove how unreliable diet recall is. And so that's the first thing is like, okay, even if they could have not, they, you know, my professors acknowledged that 10 years ago, what's the next thing? Okay. So you give them a piece of paper and they write down what they're going to eat or they write down what they're eating and they come back to you in three weeks and you review it. So even the dietitians who, even the dietitians who have those accounts now, take macros out of it, you're doing the same thing. You are you learned the same thing that I learned. The way I see it is macro tracking. I say this all the time. And even in my book, it puts a food pen and paper journal or a nutrition label, literally looking at boxes in your hand. It's just like with anything, like it makes it easy. So it doesn't have to inherently be oof disordered because it's fast or it's always there in your hand. It could just be that's convenient. So it's it's important to remember that teaching nutrition without macking, tr- tracking macros is not new. That's, an, that's not a new concept. It's actually a very old one. And so part of what I want to stop doing is demonizing the convenience of apps that allow us to do it. So that's the first thing is realizing that when you 
you skip the layer of like, okay, I don't think that diet recall was actually at, like, think about all the things, like to get from point A to point B, someone comes to you and either wants to lose weight or just like has high cholesterol or feels sluggish all day or whatever it is. Okay. You have the interview diet recall. Okay. Let's make changes based on your diet recall. Then at work. Oh, because that's not actually what you eat. Cool. So three weeks go by. Why don't we actually then write down what you're eating so I can get a better picture rate. So like you're, you're spending all these weeks trying to figure out without tracking macros what your baseline really is when you could just do it right. week one like literally just i don't even care what the numbers are don't even put goals in just enter it just like let me see your life for a sec and so that's why i have people track so with my coaching yes i teach tracking macros but the mindset portion comes up day one and day three and week two and month five I've, because it's always there. And so if you don't have a coach that's willing to literally talk about mindset around tracking macros day in and day out, like 24 seven, talk about how they're feeling about tracking macros, then maybe you shouldn't track macros, or maybe that's not the right person to teach you how it's going to help you. But the point is you can get like your money's worth way faster by actually getting the data. Cause another like specific part of it is say someone comes to you with low energy and you know as a dietitian that it could be low calorie, low iron, low B vitamins, how you're spacing your meals out. You know it could be all these things. And instead of just throwing shit at the wall to see what sticks, why don't I just figure out exactly what your problem is? <laughs> like, why don't you just track it for seven days and I'm going to see exactly that it's low iron right. and I'm going to fix it in a week. As opposed to right beating around the bush just because you're afraid of using an app and being that tedious. And so again, allowing yourself to talk about the mindset like all the time. Like you might feel awesome for three weeks and then all of a sudden, like someone makes a comment, you don't feel great about it anymore. You better have a coach that can talk to you about that. And I do feel like a lot of the coaches that come out of the intuitive eating coaches that come out of negative tracking situations, they didn't have a coach really talk them through how to eat out at restaurants and that it's okay to not be perfect and that all or nothing can't be a thing. And instead of saying, well, here's an untracked meal, then let's focus on what I really want you to think about instead of just saying, well, then it doesn't matter. Then you just do whatever you want. We'll get back at it tomorrow. So with my coaching, it's very specific. Like let's actually think about what's going to happen. Let's think about even the times of day that you're at this event. Who are you going to be with? Can you see a menu or not? What are your specific anxieties about it? Because maybe it's not even that you want have to put it in the app. Maybe it's that, I mean, it could be anything from you obviously have no idea the exact ingredients in a pasta sauce. Or maybe it's just being on your phone at all, right? So you, you can tailor everyone's tracking situation to them. And that's how you make it a positive experience. And I think as long as you're able to be in tune with the fact that that's going to even change over time, you can keep macro tracking truly just data collection. And I guess the last thing I'll say about that is I often encourage my clients to track when they feel they're not doing a good job because it's just data. And it's so cool to, to be like, you were afraid of X, Y, Z happening and A, it didn't happen. And B, look at the data. Like you're so afraid of the fat in ice cream, but look how far over my goal you went and how it almost didn't matter. And you would have never been able to put that, to solidify that in your head had you not seen the numbers. I could have said, you. it doesn't matter, I promise. But if you would have seen your weight go up and it was from eating ice cream the night before, you would have stayed in your cycle. And by tracking macros and seeing it as data, you can keep it a positive learning experience rather than a, I messed up, I'm going to start again. Yeah, I mean, it's important. Um, like, you, like you were talking about it and just again, like the word that keeps coming to my mind is tool, right? Like even like your weight, like you tell us time, like, hey, yeah, your weight's going to go up and down. And it's an awesome measure of progress when framed correctly, right? If you 
hinge too much on it, if you get restrictive in your view or your framing of your weight, then it can be very, very detrimental to your mental, to your process. Mm-hmm. Um, it just gets, it, again, it gets really interesting. And honestly, I would love to talk to a coach who purely just is like rallied against macros. And I would want to know what their process looks like. And I want to know what inspired them, honestly, like to make it look that way. Because in my head, I, I like Bryce, ultra rational person, I think of a few different things. One, you hope there's just a, an integrity there and this person just truly believes in what they're doing. Right? Hey, listen, I'm going to teach you how to enjoy life, how to eat the things you want and still live a healthy life, still be fit, still lose weight if you want, whatever, right? Uh, by intuitively eating, which I order, I already say like, hey, just so you know, like in my in my opinion, America as a whole has a disordered eating pattern, right? And so if you tell someone, to eat intuitively, well, I know how I was taught, you eat until you're full. You clean your plate, right? You want extras and it looks really, really good, go get some more. That's me, that's off my intuition. I ate intu- <laughs> I intuitively ate five pieces of pizza because that's what I've always done. Mm-hmm. Right? So there's a flaw inherently right there in your title of intuitively eating because you have no idea what this person's intuition actually is. Exactly. So, but if that is your like, That's what you're hanging it on? Great. Cool. I actually think more people fall into the category of, A, I'm going to rally against the popularity, right? There's like a macros are growing in trend. If I tell you that they're bad, I must know what the fuck I'm talking about because everyone is saying it's so good. So all of a sudden there's ears and eyes like, wait a second, you hate macros? You don't need macros? Well, tell me about this, right? So there's that camp. But then I also know that as simple as it is, you have clients come to you all the time. I'm sure I know I do that when they come to me and they're like, Hey, I want a meal plan, bro. I'm like, it doesn't work. I get it. You probably have people out there that say, Oh, you want to lose weight? You want to put on mass? Here's my meal plan. Here you go. I give it to all my clients. Right. And some clients see a lot of progress. Others don't. Um, I try to tell people all the time, like, it's not hard to get people to lose weight. If you just fucking starve them, they will lose weight. So the people you see lose weight, it, it's not to take a scientist. Now to lose weight healthily and sustainably, that's different, right? To lose the weight you want to lose, that's also different. So, you know, when you come to me and you go, hey, I want a meal plan. I want to lose weight. I want to lose fat. And I go, great. First things first, we're going to download this app. You can choose between this one, this one, and this one, or... You could, if you want to manually put it in a food journal and then just calculate it at the end of the week and then drop it in an Excel spreadsheet for me, that works too. That sounds way less sexy than, okay, let's do it. Here you go. Wow. I got this thing for you and it's got everything written out, all your meals. Da, 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 da. Or, hey, what I really want you to do is practice on, you know, portion sizes. Make a fist and do this. Or, hey, what I want you to do this week is actually eat until just before you're full, not until you're full. Like, all these different things you hear people try to give conceptual cues and hints on how to eat intuitively, I think actually puts them in a more mentally restrictive place because now they're putting together these pieces of this puzzle and you have no idea what it looks like and neither do they. Yeah. And actually, I think it's really important too to talk about the fact that one big aspect of intuitive eating coaches and accounts, and again, we can't speak for them, but we can observe, is they also are often talking about how you shouldn't have a weight loss goal. And again, there are a lot of situations where I believe that as well. And in my coaching, although if you hire me for fat loss, I'm going to say, okay. Um, there are lots of situations where I say, maybe it's not the time, you know? So I think that's also important to say is um, that part of being able to teach intuitive eating is that they're also recruiting people who don't have a fat loss goal. And if they do, God bless them, because how in the world? And that's something too that, you know, I've said on Instagram and say to my clients, and I don't even have to say this often because it it seems obvious to me, but it's very difficult to intuitively eat yourself into a deficit because if intuition is trusting, you know, listening to your hunger cues and trusting your decisions, well, you can't just then eat when you're hungry, when you're trying to lose fat. So you can't 
you can't have a weight loss goal when you eat intuitively. So these people are very, they have a particular group of people that they're working with. And it's someone probably who doesn't have a fat loss goal and probably who's coming from an unhealthy plate with tracking macros. And so again, more power to the movement of creating healthy people, you know, but, um, I do work with people who want to lose body fat. And so in that case, you can't eat intuitively. How are you supposed to eat intuitively? And you know, it's not forever. Like I, I'm never going to have someone in deficit forever, even if you work with me forever. So, you know, let me do my coaching while you do yours. But that's, that's one thing that's very different between me and someone who maybe is only intuitive eating is not only is it difficult, it, it's so difficult, like you said, to to trust your intuition when we're coming from a diet culture, like just that's inherently not teaching us anything. But also, what if you do have a goal for fat loss? And again, that's maybe another whole another argument why, right? Like Hayes is healthy at every size. And there's a huge movement movement behind that. Of some doctors say, well, more adipose tissue on you changes hormone signaling. So is it actually changing your health long term? Some people say no, right? Like, and so I think that's a whole other argument, but um, I have to acknowledge that if someone comes to me for fat loss, like they're hiring me for that and I'm going to help them do that while we do all these other things, like keep mindset good and and be honest about what I think they're looking for and that it isn't sexy, like you said. And that's what makes it very different from, I think, any, an intuitive eating account or coach is that they're saying, stop caring about how you look. And again, there's a time and place for that. No one should care about how they look forever. But if you do, again, that's another conversation. I don't think that we have to demonize that. Yeah, um, I think all the time. To your point, it's the demonization of it, right? It's the mindset, right. Of it, right? Because I am a person who wants to be in shape my entire life, as long as I can. Like I want to be the the 50-year-old sexy black man with abs still, just like peppery gray and stuff. But it's not because of some sort of social validation. It's, I believe there's a, a pride, like the whole, like, I'm not religious, but the idea of having this is my temple. It's the one body I have. I want to treat it the best I can. I want to be as active as long as possible. I want to be as healthy as long as possible. My quality, there is a positive association with healthy diets or dietary habits and longevity and also the, uh, the quality of that longevity, right? Like, so... As a person who has a ton of obese fam- of people in his family, like it's hard for me to stomach the like health at every size. I have friends who are big and I want them to love themselves on some all the time. Dude, you should never ever hate yourself. You should love all versions of you. But if you ever want to be a healthier version of you and you know for, you know, just looking at yourself, like, hey, I'm probably like 10 to 30 pounds overweight. I could stand to just lose some weight. Maybe I don't have a goal number right which i do think is again that restrictive idea and coaching people out of the restrictive mindset is step number one let's remove the goal of 130 pounds let's just get healthier because i say all in my class that if beyonce weighed 400 pounds but looked the way beyonce does would anyone give a fuck what the scale said yeah <laughs> no one would actually care and devil's advocate too i mean obviously you can't look at anyone and say whether or not they're unhealthy healthy or unhealthy. You can't, you can't look at someone who you consider overweight and say, Oh, they're definitely more unhealthy than I am. Cause it's just not true. We know so many competitors who look the part with trash blood work. I mean, we know that. And so we can't, it's not just about how they look. The point is though, that there is science behind actual adipose tissue and how that can change hormone signaling, which is everything from sex hormones to insulin signaling, you know, I mean, there's, there's actually, there could actually be health implications. And, and so my whole thing is if you want to lose weight, let's like, let's think about the whys, you know I mean? So people come to me for fat loss, but I, we get blood work right away. Right. And so if I see that they have high cholesterol, well, we can like, it's all, it's related, you know? So instead of just saying, okay, like let's get you ready for, I I even kind of get weird when someone says, I want to get in shape for my wedding. Cause I want to say, why, why do you feel like you have to change for one day? It, it doesn't make me feel good. So I met, I immediately, you know, they get to know me first and then I might say stuff like that, but it right away I say, let's get blood work done. You know, or like, how are you feeling? Like what, what are your goals outside of this? Because 
I'm down with you looking amazing on your wedding. But also like, let's make it about more than that because I'm going to show you how changing tracking macros can change your life. Right. You know? It's not about the day. I think that's the thing is like people, we do well with like date markers and being able to say, hey, like buy this cruise and buy my next birthday and buy my wedding and buy my mm -hmm. kid's fourth birthday. And I think that's just as humans, like we're, we're near sight. Yeah, we're, yeah, we're, we want that like, hey, I want to work for this day. And I think wedding, arguably people would say the most important day of your life, short of like your first kid being born. Um, so like they want to look their best in the way today. And I, I do enjoy helping women in that process. But to your point, it's the mindset. Like, are, is this something you're going to carry on? Is this, are you going to be healthy in some motherhood? Like there are, are really good reasons and implications for you to continue the habits that we're building right now to look our best on this day, but to also teach our future kids healthy habits to continue to be a model for them to try to model after in their own life and say, hey, you know, mom taught us how to be healthy early on. Mom taught us how to monitor hunger cues and make sure we're active and we're out at the gym or we're out at the park or whatever. And so those are just very healthy habits that you shouldn't, you know, envelop and bring into your life just for a certain day. And like you yeah. said, for what? Are you looking to live a healthier lifestyle from this day on, including your wedding? Or is it just like, this is my day, or let's be looking at me. I feel self conscious in this dress, and you know, whatever. Because then there's more mental underlying things that you want to make sure you're like, approaching. Yeah. Well, right. So, like, okay. So, I've talked about how I love tracking macros, but like, how do I use tracking macros to transition into intuitive eating? And I, I would love to talk about that because obviously it's something that people should know when they hire someone who has an end goal of intuitive eating. And I, again, just don't like the issue of tracking macros being the opposite of intuitive eating because it's just not. Okay. And so one thing that I do with my clients um, is I call instead of um, IE days simply or untracked days or free meals or cheat meals, I, I, I'll do an intuitive eating day and I'll give them intuitive minimums. And this is how I feel everyone should live their life forever. And I, I, the first one they ever get with me, even if I know they're going to be, they know they're going to be tracking for a while. I still say now this day is going to mimic how I want you to live your life forever. And so my intuitive minimums include a protein goal, a fiber goal, um, a water goal, a fruit and vegetable goal. And, um, a supplement goal if that's something that I feel like an omega-3 if I feel like I do want them to take one forever. And um, the way that I'm setting that up for them is even when you're eating intuitively, there are things you're going to have to think about. And I think that's one thing too that people don't... I, I wonder if when people say, well, I definitely want intuitive eating over tracking macros because I want the results, but I don't want all that work. And that's not everyone who seeks out intuitive eating, but a lot of my clients who go from tracking macros to intuitive eating, even though I've set them up very well, they still have maybe their first intuitive week and come back to me and go, man, that didn't go the way that I thought that it would. <laughs> and the things they say include, I was very excited, right? To be present, not on my phone, to think about it a lot less to not worry about weighing my food, all of that is amazing and is the point. But then they also say, but then it led me to not really grocery shop. I didn't meal prep anything. And it, it the pendulum swings too far the other way. And so the learning lesson there is that you can eat intuitively, but you still have to think about it. And you're now, right, ignorance is, is bliss, but you're not ignorant. ignorant anymore. You now realize that you need more protein than you were eating before. And again, just as I said in my last podcast with you guys, you may be the only one who cares about protein, but that doesn't mean you shouldn't care about it when you're done tracking. You know more now. You just spent all this money to learn. You now know more. And so you're going to have to take what you've learned and apply it. And, and that still takes a little bit. You can't just go from being so tedious and on top of it to like not thinking about it, right? You still have to grocery shop for the same foods that you were eating prior to, to hit your protein bowl. And so for the, the intuitive minimums, the way that I get them off the numbers is start right now thinking about the foods that you love to eat that you know give you protein. And so on your intuitive minimum days, 
you might be throwing some foods in your app, but maybe it's just to see the protein total. You're not even looking at carbs and fats and then you even delete it when you're done. But what you're doing is throwing foods in there to say, okay, the, you know, that breakfast and lunch and the snack is going to get me about 80. I'm going to have a Greek yogurt and a cheese stick. And that's what I have to have every day to hit my hundred gram minimum. And, and then I'm going to delete it, but I'm going to remember those foods. And so again, tracking macros is a way to figure out how to get a tangible food list. Like how do you even get a good grocery shop shopping list together that's based on numbers that you're now aware of because you just spent all this money working with a coach who taught you, you know, without, you've got to plan it a little bit. And so again, same thing with fiber and fiber typically comes from fruits and veggies and whole grains. And so what foods do you know you have to eat to hit your fiber goal? And, and I even say like, like put a throw it in your app, figure out the number, don't look at anything else, and then literally delete it out of your app. I just want you to get the addition, right? I mean, you could do pen and paper, like calculator, but just throw it in your app. It adds it up for you. Write the foods down. You know, you have to have raspberries in your oatmeal and, you know, that bread or whatever, and write it down. That's your list. That's your grocery list. And then delete it out of your app because we're not tracking. We're we're adding up the fiber, you know? And, and so those intuitive minimums, yes, you're tracking, but it's it's to teach you to sustain health, right? I mean, even there's lots of research that disease states progress much faster in old age in direct correlation with low muscle mass. Oh, like that sucks. That sucks, right? So it's not just about being a bodybuilder and gaining muscle. It's about preserving it. And so, yeah, I want you to care about protein forever. I want you to have it forever. Um, And then the other thing too is like, this is what Emily just talked about on our story. You can be a professional in this space and not track for a long time and just kind of forget. Mm-hmm. You just kind of get out of the habit because you're, you, you live in a different city, your grocery store changes, you, your interests change, your food interests change. And so the ways you hit your protein before might change in a couple years. So just throw it in the app again. I mean, because it's hard even for someone who's been tracking for a long time to determine the difference from by eyeballing between 130 grams of protein and 100. Yep. It's a hard thing to do. And so again, if you can just take the time that you're using tracking every day as a means to an end, but also like do it and get it done. We have a goal to, to hit. And then p- make sure that you're paying attention to the things that you're eating to get you these goals. So that when you start intuitively eating, you're going to be able to apply it. You know the foods that you like. That's why I think so many people now who have a good relationship with tracking who don't do it anymore, myself included, like I'm Gucci. Like I know the foods I need to eat to hit my protein goal. I know. I know if I don't have this one food, I'm low. And here's the thing about the mindset part is one day is fine. But if I'm starting to feel run down and I realize it's because the grocery store was out of that yogurt, that's why. And I know that from tracking right. and it's a mindset thing. So it's, it's a transition that you have to make, but it's also important to realize that intuitive eating takes work too, whether you track or, or you don't, you know, I mean, yes, you can teach proper health and good nutrition and good habits without tracking in an app. Sure. But it's going to be related to some type of addition and looking at the food lab- labels anyway. You're still going to be teaching spacing meals out and you're going to be giving them a food list of all the foods that give them iron and B vitamins. If, if their issue is energy, right? Like you're, you're still going to be doing the same things. So the app just helps them see it. Right. You know, I was going to say, because that is all good. Like, I think that the way you just explained that gives everyone a really, anyone who's going to listen to the entirety of it. Right. And so I told Bryce the same thing. And this is such an important piece. So I want to circle back to, and I want to ask if you had four sentences to tell people about why, so pretty much starting from the inception of that st- that statement there, where you're like, hey, tracking your macros and intuitively eating are not opposites, right? They're not on opposite ends of the spectrum, at least not meant to be. They're not meant to be pitted against one another. How would you guide someone from that overarching statement into the transition from maybe tracking macros on a very anal retentive, 
frequent level to shifting into more of a lifestyle, just awareness with a macro tracking background, being able to quote unquote intuitively, how would you surmise that into someone who just had 15 seconds to hear you? Um, just, I immediately go to the fact that you are such an individual and that is why tracking macros makes it, um, I feel that tracking macros is important because you can really be yourself in the process and not be someone else. It's not a coach telling you what to eat. It's not you doing something someone posted about. Tracking allows you to throw foods in there. And like my favorite B vitamin foods are not going to be your favorite B vitamin foods. The way I hit my protein will not be the same as you hit hitting your protein. And that could be, right, that you are a vegan or vegetarian, or it could be cultural. And, and the the importance of, I mean, the, the other side of it is what's your goal? Like, what are you trying to get out of anything? And then that's what you should tailor your tracking to, but there's something to be learned. And again, everyone should care about protein. Everyone, everyone. So maybe you don't, you wish that you didn't have anything to do when you were done tracking, but like you do now. Like, you now know that you need more than the 0.8 because that's just to like be a human that can sit in a chair like that's it's not enough and you know that now well so let's let's get the num let's get rid of the numbers and yeah i think tracking to intuitive eating allows you to build a way of life that's you and isn't someone else it's not someone you saw online it's not what your coach told you to do I'm giving you the framework and you're filling it with the food and lifestyle that you want with some of these parameters in mind. I like it. No, that's, that's, that's what I was trying to get to. I think that that's a, I think in very photographic, illustrative ways, it's how I learn and it's how I teach a lot of my clients. And so, um, the whole time you're talking, I just think of like, obviously macros as a tool, your life is the what goes on top of all the tools you have right every tool you acquire in your life you use to live a better life right so i think of a sword and a sheath right the idea that like yeah this sword can be sheath and it can stay there for the most of the time but you should still know how to use the sword like you can't just carry around a fucking sword and a sheath and call yourself cool like you should it's just a sheath without a sword but if it never can come out and you can never use it then how can you use the tool right and so to me, I like that metaphor a lot. I've used it before. But it's like, yeah, we're going to get to the point where you can put the sword away. But knowing how to use the sword is really fucking important. Otherwise, you're just carrying around this weight for nothing. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, and I, I think that that kind of segues into the other questions I have for you, which I think we actually probably differ in how we approach okay. this. Um, it's one of the ones we, we talked about earlier, like having the, uh, the document here. But it's... Um, the transitioning of how we refer to tracking macros, right? Are we able to shift the societal perception of it by changing the way that we talk about it, the vernacular we use when referring to it? Yes. Yeah. I mean, that was one of my final points is like, if you're going to start calling tra ma macro tracking a diet, I'm going to stop calling it that because it's not what you're saying it is. And so one of my best posts ever was how to frame what you're doing with me to friends and family who are not doing this. And I think that that resonates with everyone because people who do this with good coaches for the right reasons realize that they're not on a diet and it's hard for people to get that. It's hard to get that point across. And so the post just basically talks about, oh, you're on a diet. No, no, I, I'm really just using this app to, to gather information. And it's not forever, but it is something I'm doing for myself right now. Right. And then the next question is, well, why do you have to like be so strict? Well, right. So like it, it, it changes the narrative and that's sort of what the point of my book was. I wanted, I wanted it to be as concise as possible. Right. It's 43 pages. Like I wanted to like keep it real short so that people wanted to carry it around and like get through it, but also that my voice was in there so that you had this arsenal of like reasons. Um, and I talk about just reframing what you're doing. Like you're not on a diet. You're not on a diet. You're not on a diet. <laughs> Stop saying it. So how do we say it? I'm 
learning about my intakes. That's one of my favorite things to say is I'm learning about my intakes. What was one of the other things that I said? I'm oh, monitoring my nutrition, right? Like you're monitoring things. And, and the reason monitoring is good is because even if someone goes over or under my recommendations, I'm not being like, okay, like that's not okay. I'm talking to them about why it happened because there's always a reason. If there's always a reason someone didn't hit the, the protocol that you gave them. So first you say, now remember why my ranges are set the way that they're set, you know? Because I think that's the first thing too is some IE coaches will say, you know, you're paying someone to tell you how much to eat. You should be like listening to your body. Okay, fine. Yes. But so if, if I'm going to ask you to hit specific ranges, let me remind you why they're there even if temporarily. And then let, let's specifically talk about it. I have this every team Zoom. I say, you guys, be so specific that like I know exactly what you did last Tuesday for why you're under or over because there's a reason and it's not good or bad. Let's just chat about it. And so monitoring my intakes is just, I'm just learning about them, right? Like you don't have to label them. And in the grand scheme of things, even if fat loss that needs to be specific, even if fat loss is your goal, you're still going to see that like not being perfect is still going to get you results. Right. And I'm going to show you that because your mindset's going to reflect what we're doing together. 100%. I, um, I'm a lot more facetious than most. I usually, <laughs> <You> are. <laughs> so I usually encourage people to rethink things I think are stupid. Um, so when someone says I'm on a diet, I go, what's diet yeah hey you know and they oh, well you know you're like eating like, like no 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 what you eat every day is your diet yes, that, I definitely, sure. so to be on a diet right yeah yeah everyone's on it yeah right. and so yeah. that to me immediately kind of goes oh, okay well i see what you're doing it's like right but my point in asking that question was to kind of reframe the way you think about what i do when i observe what i'm eating mm-hmm. when i even if i'm not quote unquote tracking right tracking macros it sounds so immersive it sounds like this is an intense process yeah it is right for some exactly. reason, I'm like, it's, it's an overhaul um but i'm like i'm just deserving i'm just being mindful i'm mindfully eating as opposed to intuitively eating right i'm just being cautious about some of the things i decide to partake in because i have goals and like you mentioned several times here it comes back to what your goals are if you just want to be a person who eats a balanced you know, consumption of things, that's very different than a person who's like, hey, I would like to recomp. I would like to gain a little muscle, lose a little fat. I would like to just lose a little fat. The doc says I'm well overweight and I need to lose weight. Okay. So these are all different types. Yeah, of- but doctors, F doctors, you say that, but continue. Right. Correct. I, I uh, again, <laughs> I, I have my own biases, but I also think that there's a level of like, we've gotten to a point where we stop asking people to do the hard things. And instead we try yeah. to do them easy things, which is where I think that there's a partial birth to intuitive eating where they're like, hey, like, just listen to your body. And I'm like, I'm telling you right now, my uncle, who's 400 pounds, listens to his body. Yeah. And yeah, so yeah, like, yeah. his yeah. body is betraying him. His mind is betraying him into an early grave. Like, that's that's not something that I want, right? But it's become so taboo to encourage people with love to say, hey, I think we need to be mindful about what we're consuming. Just something to be mindful about the amount of alcohol we drink or mindful about the way we drive or mind all these things. We yeah. will drive intuitively. I'm just going to lay back. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, bro, that'd be mindful. I'd pay attention to things that are going on around me because that's what's going to keep me safe for the long term. And so I do think that there's a space for meeting someone with empathy and saying, hey, like, listen, I love you. Your family loves you. And here's why they're going to embrace some of the hard things. Like this is a difficult process. If it was easy, everyone would do it. If it, it's a great tool, people know that it, it works. The, the birth of intuitive eating is the, the rally against the difficulties or the warped mindsets that come with trying to cope with how difficult it can be for some. If instead there is an empathy component and we remove these bad coaches and these bad coaching experiences so you limit the people who are negatively affected by it, it's a very cool tool, very useful tool for everyone. And it can be used to live long and healthy lives. Yeah, for sure. I just think, I mean, you don't, not only do most people not have accurate hunger cues to begin with because chronic dieting 
lowers your resting metabolic rate. Or I mean, so many people actually come to me wanting to lose weight and they're under eating. I mean, so what do you do then? How do you intuitively eat your way out of that one? And so um, not only are hunger cues not accurate in most people because of chronic dieting, and that's not just like a mindset thing, that's a hormone thing. Like ghrelin, leptin and ghrelin, those are hunger hormones that are being changed from previous eating habits. Gotta, I mean, you gotta like work, you gotta unlearn that, but it's gotta be based on data and everyone's different. Everyone's starting place is different. But also even dietitians don't necessarily know where to find protein in every food. Like not, I mean, not you, you don't know like that broccoli has a little bit of protein and a lot of people, I mean, and that's even a specific, like most people don't even know where to find carbs. And so if you're trying to teach balanced meals, again, you can do it without having them track in an app. You can, but it's all going to be based on the same thing. Like maybe you as the coach are doing it. Like when I learn it in school, when we learn it in school, we're the one, I mean, yes, it was kind of like a, you're going to create meal plans for people. And it was always based on you doing the math, you calculating, you f- like getting their food list, what they like to eat, you figuring out the macros for them. And so what you're basically doing is like kind of giving them a piece of what you know, and then letting them fill in the blanks. And it's not only helpful because again, how you eat now is not going to be how you eat in five, 10, 15 years. So you can consistently change things for yourself without paying anyone a dime. But also it's you're involved in the process. These clients are not just blindly following something that you give them. And so even if you want to do it without them tracking, like it's still in, it's like ingrained, like protein, carbs, and fats are ingrained in good nutrition. So you're doing it as the coach or the clients are doing it and it's empowering. So it truly, it's a mindset thing. And if you came from a place where it was all or nothing, or someone demonized you three grams outside the range and didn't tell you why, or if they said, you know what, you're, you're getting too caught up, go have a cheat meal. Or, I mean, it, it it's, it's how it was presented to you. And, but uh, yeah, you, it's very difficult to eat intuitively without some type of base knowledge. And again, even if it's just, oh, I didn't know that had protein. That's really great. That's awesome. You know? And I, I really went through all these different chapters of like being a dietitian and just like tracking to like get my degree and then being a bodybuilder and tracking for, I competed for five years and then I, in a reverse, I got pregnant and I lost my appetite. And so tracking was a, it took on a whole new meaning for me. And then breastfeeding where you actually have to eat more. And then throughout all, all of this, learning the important importance of micronutrients, but like on an individual level, this is actually something I wanted to mention. So many people say, I eat very healthy, right? In their questionnaire, we asked for some, some overview before our phone call. And they say, I eat a, a pretty healthy diet. They list a couple of things. It's always like salad. I have breakfast every day, like these like buzzword things that I know are good for me. And then they literally track because I specifically have them use an app. I explain exactly how I want them to do it and how long it's like three, four days, you know, and what to report back on and what to look for. And they're so nutrient deficient. They're like, yo, I thought I knew what I was doing. And I'm like, that's okay. That's literally the point. The point of tracking is so that you can actually see that that person saying that this salad was healthy or that you having one fruit and vegetable a day is not actually cutting it. And here's why. I mean, it's not, you know, don't beat yourself up about it. Just be like, dang, I this is cool. It's cool to now know. And so that is not only something I teach my clients. Actually, it's kind of a joke because I make my clients do it and it's tedious. But they come out knowing so much more about micros. But I've lived it. Being pregnant with no appetite, again, ignorance is bliss. <laughs> kind of wish I didn't know what I know because I forced myself to eat. But I do think I'm a better person from it. And maybe even like a healthier person from it. Like I, I had a healthy pregnancy and and I'm healthier postpartum. And and I think that's because I I know better and I made myself eat a certain way. And even now with without tracking, my appetites have certainly changed since pregnancy, a problem in itself. But the idea of tracking has allowed me to go back and 
enter foods in and sort of create this like, I don't even call them meal plans because we're done with that. We're done with meal plans. But I do call it a full day of eating example. Here's an example, one full day of eating. If you feel like crap and you've just been out of your norm, go to your full day example. Just eat your full day of eating example. And for me, it hits about, you know, it's about my maintenance calories and it's every micro. Every micro is, one, micro is 100%. And I pride myself in that. But you better believe I feel amazing after a couple of days back with that, with that day. And it's okay if it's not every day. But the point is I have used tracking macros to create that day for myself. And I mean, not only do I feel it right away, but like long-term health-wise, that's going to help me. Yep. Unsheathing the sword, man. I like it. Yeah. <laughs> yes. I, right. I um, no, we talked about, I guess, like uh, towards the end here, just buzzwords or things that we hear in the industry um, that we might like say, hey, like if someone is saying X, run, <laughs> you know, like run the other way, flag their shit is inappropriate. No, I'm kidding. Um, but for you, you know, obviously just, you know, nutrition's my background, right? It's my, my undergrad degree. I know a lot about it. Obviously, I pride myself a bit more in the training side because it just interests me more. Uh -huh. uh, I see stuff and I see stuff. I see clowns on all ends of the spectrum. I just, I just laugh. I'm like, ah, oh, where's your red nose? Um, but what have you seen lately that you just like, just gets you? Mm. Um, so I actually wrote a bunch down. Well, I know for me, like, like I said, I'm facetious. So in the name intuitive eating always comes down. I'm just like, all right, cool. Like the idea of like, listen to your body is the subscript of intuitive eating. Um, or someone going, oh, you let someone tell you what to eat. Like you should just listen to your body. And I'm like, it kind of denies all science there. Cause like, if you're not teaching people about like homeostatic responses, like it's like, oh, okay. Like your body is in a place and has been in a place with so a cliche. Like you didn't get this way overnight. Right. So your body's used to this. Losing weight is actually a very traumatic response or a traumatic experience for your body. Your body's like, dude, we've been this size for a long time. I've got everything streamlined. I can do this shit in my sleep. It doesn't really change. So when you incite change, that's when you start to see things aesthetically, even, you know, and like obviously health wise, like the way you, your biofeedback is uh, being reported after that, the way you're feeling energetically, et cetera, your sleep, that stuff comes from the change that you're inciting, changing that homeostasis that you're, you're, you're in. Um, so to tell someone, listen to their body. I'm like, well, that's kind of what got them there, right? Like, it's kind of like, it's kind of exactly why they are the way they are and they're coming to you for help. And you're saying, yeah, bro, just keep doing what you're doing. Like, to me, that is an Im immediate red flag. Like, you're not telling them to do that, right? You're going to enact change on some level. You're telling them to listen to your body because it's clickbait. Right. And it, I mean, I'm sure that these coaches, like, they're not dumb. I, the ones that I have in mind are very, very smart, good dietitians. So my thoughts are exactly that. Like that's, that's what sounds good. And in, in general is maybe what you believe, but when they start coaching with you, they're going to pay you for something and you're going to do something for them. And it's going to be, you're going to have them change something, you know? So it's, again, it's protein, carbs, and fats are ingrained in good nutrition. Um, it doesn't mean that like to the gram is, do, you know, if that's not for you, fine. But yeah, I agree that like, even the coaches who say that, like their coaching is actually a little bit more complicated than that. <laughs> Very much so. so that's, that's always my biggest one. That's always my biggest one. Like, yes. like yeah, there's, no. there, there's a framework for it, right? Like when I have clients that come to me after be being beaten up for six, seven, eight, sometimes 10, 12 weeks in a plan. And they're like, yeah, man, I just, I didn't, I know I need to do more. I'm like, no, 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 no. Hold on, hold on. Your all yeah. the feedback is that you are not recovering from your sessions. You're barely yeah. seeing your cortisol levels are probably through the roof. Your body is like, help me, you know, mm -hmm. so we're going yeah, to, your body hasn't seen a parasympathetic nervous system situation for many days, many so days. Never, like this is the quote unquote, listen to your body time. Your body's saying let's rest, but your body might be saying, fuck the gym. I'm not going back. We're not going to say that we are going to listen to it, take its feedback and then build a plan based off of the feedback and say, Hey, I want you to pull back on all volume and intensity this week. I want you to nowhere near failure, get a good, like, pump, move some blood around, make sure you're mobile, go home, get in and out, rest. We're going to come back after we're fully recovered and then we'll get back to it, right? We listened to our body, but we didn't sit on our ass like our body probably wanted us right. to do. And that's a good point too is, you know, 
as a trauma response, if you have a bad experience tracking macros, you're probably inherently going to go the opposite, like the very drastic opposite. And then you're going to want to do something again. And so a lot of these coaches also say, well, you know, you keep going back to diets so because it doesn't work. So stick with intuitive eating. It's like, or they went too far the other way. There was no guidance. Like you can have the best of both worlds. And like, it makes me sad that some people never had that. And so again, the idea, like the purpose of them creating their coaching, like it's all rooted in good. And I'm not even trying to like debase like what they're saying. The point is though, that you can have it the other way. Um, No, I wrote, we'll make these like rapid fire. Um, You shouldn't think about numbers when you're cooking, like calories. What are our thoughts? Yeah. I mean, I think it just goes back to like, do you even know what macros are and like where they're found in food? Yeah. You know? I think it, it, again, it's all clickbait, right? You shouldn't think about numbers. I get it, right? You want people to go, oh yeah, see, they're just like, be free. And I'm like, yeah, you shouldn't think about numbers in anything to the point of it being crippling, right? So if you are completely undoing all of your meals and you hate eating because nothing you eat brings you any joy because you're thinking about its caloric makeup and it's, you know, core. Yeah. Then like, obviously that has become a weapon being used against you. But to say like, oh, fuck it, stick of butter, throw it in there. Who cares? One yeah. stick, two stick, three stick. I'm not counting. Like, right. that's stupid. It just doesn't apply to everyone right. for sure. Um, unnecessary to count macros to live a healthy lifestyle. We've been talking about that. Um, yeah, tracking macros causes more harm than good. I mean, it's too blanket statement. It's just, it's just not the case. It's with missing. Everybody. It says, and it's missing. Can. Exactly. Well, it's missing one or two words, right? Like, and that's and that's how you know people have an agenda when they say these things because it's like an unhealthy relationship with tracking macros, restrictively tracking macros. Mm-hmm. Those things, that simple word, two word ad there is an actual true statement. It's fully encompassing yeah, right. the like, idea of what they're listening to. And you know what? I actually remember I, um, again, I'm friends with some of these accounts. And one, there was a situation that someone posted something, this one coach, and I commented and I said, yes, however, like what, it, what about like, don't you think that that was the coaching? Like, don't you think that wasn't actually this? And she goes, yes, but most people who hire me come from this place. And I go, exactly. You know, like it it is okay, again, that you're serving a population who went through what you went through. And again, then in that case, okay, but you can't use your platform and those people to eliminate macro tracking from the conversation, right? I can. Um, Tracking starts as a good thing and ends up controlling you. And again, that's mindset, friend. Like the second it starts controlling someone, that's in my coaching. That is ingrained in my coaching. Most of my conversations about are about mindset. So that's a coaching issue, friend. <laughs> um, oh, just weighing salads, vegetables, spinach. I've heard all of those isn't normal. Okay. There's there's macros and everything. You know, like I'm sure most of my clients by now don't weigh their spinach. I'm sure that they like grab a a handful and track it the same and it's going to be fine. Like, I think the longer you do it with a good, healthy mindset and a coach that helps you see it that way, you learn very quickly what you don't have to weigh and what you've got to weigh. Do they know that, like, to that, again, this is one of those things that's a question, like cups, like the cup measuring cups. And it's like, those those things are not new inventions. (laughs) So ancient Greeks, like before people could put stuff in a cup that was like, the same, they use rocks. They would like say, hey, this is a serving size of this. And that's how they would serve people. Like, if this is this much, this weighs this much, this is this size. Mm-hmm. Humans throughout their entire lives have portioned meals out, out of necessity, because we didn't have the abundance of it. Yeah. So it's not a new thing for us to be mindful, again, the word mindful about what we're consuming. Yeah. And again, it just comes from lack of knowledge, just like someone who thinks that just having one fruit or veggie or this one habit or this one salad a day makes you healthy, you still could be very nutrient deficient, even to the point where it's like affecting your hormones. Similarly, you can still gain weight from lots of fruits and vegetables. I mean, right? So like if it, depending on what your issue is, like there's there's a reason just to get context in everything. Um, I just only, I wrote down two more. 
Yeah. Parking can be detrimental to some people's mental health. We've just been talking about all of that. Um, and then this last one, reverse dieting is disordered. Ooh, I don't know if we should get into that, but that was a direct statement from an account I saw. Um, What's your initial thought on that? Like, I disagree. No, 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 I was going to say like initial thought with uh, a sentence of context. Uh, like like explaining? Overarching. Well, yeah, overarching why you Yeah, yeah. I, um, reverse dieting, the idea I think had become buzzwordy. And I think, it, honestly, we put more like emphasis on it than we need to, to her, their defense. But I, um, I feel that resting metabolic rate can be changed with diet habits and you need to set a new normal if you've been chronically dieting. And so if you've been under eating on purpose or not, um, there, there's even if it's just anecdotal evidence supporting a slow increase of calories. And so, you know, that's a, I'm sure that's a big, big conversation. Like, do you have to, maybe not. Um, I think honestly, from like a dietitian perspective that comes from, um, refeeding syndrome is, is a very real thing. So if someone has an, a clinical eating disorder, um, and, and is being treated for it, you actually have to be very careful about refeeding them. Um, and it's even less about the food and more about electrolyte imbalances essentially, and, um, how it can be very detrimental to health if you refeed them too quickly. Um, a study that came out a couple years ago though, actually said that it's not as much of a concern as, as they thought, which is great news. Cause if, if the point is we're trying to get you to eat more as quickly as possible, and we don't have to like risk your health, we're going to do it. And so my whole thing with that is sure, I, you know, you're continuing the narrative of like, it doesn't matter that much. Just eat more. If you want more fine. Okay. But also there are situations where if you just, again, and maybe in my defense, this is just because I'm defending a client who wants fat loss because I believe in helping someone with that, if that's what they want, you can put more, you can store adipose tissue in certain situations, especially if your resting metabolic rate is low. So I do, I personally see a reason for it, but again, I don't do it for six months anymore. I can reverse someone back to maintenance in three weeks. And that's part of my coaching. And, and it's because, yeah, do I think that someone needs to slowly increase for set six months? Absolutely not. Okay. And maybe we used to feel that way. And maybe that's what that statement's from. I don't know. Yeah. No, I mean, I think, I think it's all, it's, it's funny because well, most of these points can be argued with common sense, right? The idea is that you, my overarching statement as a coach is that I want to get you back to baseline as quickly as possible, but not quicker, right? That I, like they, it should be done as efficiently as possible. We don't need to be, like you said, in this six month reverse. Think about it this way, though. If you've been chronically eating, you know, fifteen hundred calories, you've been dropping down, and your baseline before we started this was twenty five hundred, twenty seven hundred, whatever. And I just go, great, eat three thousand calories for the next whoever, and we'll get back to it, right? Okay. Like, does it say go out to a normal, random person who's never been to school and be like, hey, does this make sense to you? <laughs> I had to bet money, probably not. Yeah. <laughs> I guess not. You know, maybe we should yeah. a bit more strategically. And I think that's just it. It's the common sense of it. It's like now the minutiae of the science is where we come in as good coaches. But if that off the rip doesn't sound like it makes sense, then that means there's some context here. Let's not just throw a blanket statement and say that's disordered eating. Mm -hmm. Say, eh, no, it's it's actually like logical. Um, now maybe the way it's enacted might yeah. be yeah uh, the actual premise itself is is not yeah that's all i got i was like i need to stop doing this i'm getting angry i'm like writing down all these red flags i'm like all right i need to go to bed Fucking great like, for me I need uh, to yeah let's, let's talk about the sign up let's talk about the book a bit let people know where they can find it we got a couple minutes just tell them a bit about the book let them know where they can find it and where they can find you yes so this book is true it, it's marketed truly for both people who don't know what a macro is because it goes over that, but then also for people who actually need to reframe their thinking around tracking macros because it does that. Even in a quick 43 pages, it streamlines who should do it, how to do it, why you should do it, kind of how long you should do it. Um, and that in itself is just very refreshing. And a lot of people who have the book now are people who've tracked macros and even they, I mean, even if just out of support, they got it, but even they're like, yes, like this is it. This is like how everyone should learn it. And it's, you know, it can serve so many purposes. Again, if you don't know what a macro is, the book tells you, and it's a really great quick reference. Um, 
for people who don't really know who've gotten it, the feedback I get is that it's very digestible, right? It's not a, a novel. You don't feel like you're back in school. It's, again, it's the whole start to finish is 43 pages, even with a FAQ in the back. So it's very like as quickly as I can say this, I'm going to say it. And so, and I wanted it that way because I want more people to understand the science of like just what we even mean by protein, carb, fat, and why I think it's actually important for you to know and how it's not a diet. It's just the thing that you can do to learn. Um, so uh, yeah, it's awesome. If you get it, um, let me, I'll just give you the exclusive really quick. It doesn't come with what macros to follow. I've actually never said that publicly. I, when people ask, I say it publicly, but it doesn't come with what macros you need to follow. And it actually doesn't tell you how to calculate them. Um, there's lots of reasons for that and they're explained in the book. Um, but yeah, you can find it on Amazon. It's also here in Akron locally at mustard seed market, which is awesome. You can find me on Instagram mostly. What's your Instagram handle? Uh, Paige Thorla, my first and last name. Love that. Love that. Yeah. Love. Thank you very much for tuning right. in, everybody. Thank you, Paige, for, for teaching us some things today. Um, I'm sure we'll get tons of little snippets and stuff for us to use for social media and whatnot. And this will be yeah. available on all platforms, including YouTube, saw Spotify, Apple, anyone who takes our money. Uh, <laughs> you know, you'll be able to put that all out there and show everyone, you know, you know what you're talking about. Yay. Thanks, Chris. Thank you. Talk to you guys later. Thank you guys.